Hello, Morse, I'm Morris Kohansky, Wilderness Living Skills and Survival Instructor. We are demonstrating some uh, bush skills, uh, particularly how to light a fire under adverse conditions here in the back 40 of Four Dog Stove. We have here a suitable uh, tree that has been dead uh, long enough that uh, it's uh, grayed, it's uh, uh, weathered, and it's an aspen that we likely is desirable. It makes good kindling if the wood is soft enough to work. It's absolutely vertical, there's cracks up the side. All indicators that you've got a pretty dry piece of wood. If you have a tree like this, absolutely vertical and at least wrist thick, likelihood is you can shave off the first quarter inch of damp wood and then you'll find solid dry wood that will ignite with a metal match readily. And if you get enough feathers going here, which may be sometimes a hundred of all I know, and this bundle has been stuck into a, a pond or into a river to soak thoroughly, you take it off, light these feathers, hold this on there, and the flames and heat are great enough to vaporize the moisture on the twigs and then ignite this bundle. And when this bundle is, uh, is lit, the, the Kohansky, <laughs> the stove, the, the seven cup pot will disappear in front of your eyes, uh, even possibly with such a small amount of twigs. As you look at these twigs, they're very porous. You haven't, uh, haven't compressed them. If you get a, a hug size bundle, you're sure to create a, a terrific amount of heat provided you don't squeeze them together. So the usual spacing in the ideal sense is about a finger between every twig. Here it's about uh, pencils every twig, which is a little slower. But at any rate, we're going to um, uh, make the shavings. Now sometimes an aspen will cure very hard. It is in our part of the world, it's uh, known as a very hardwood at times. And we try to uh, make these shavings. I'm, I'm not gonna go whole hog. Oh, I get a feeling that it's gonna be cooperative. I have a few cuts that I'm making. Those shavings that have fallen there could be collected and they will ignite very readily with the metal match, with the, with the rod. Pretty soon my cut will be such that the shavings will stay on. I am trying to even out the surface because it's all wavy here. And it is a tough wood because I can't really get very far in. I can only take thin shavings. I hope I can manage that. Sometimes a tree like this, you'd break it down, take something smoother from higher, and then do the same thing. But use your back as the protection if it's raining to keep the rain from wetting the feathers as you're making them. As I run my fingers on here, I find the wood is exceptionally hard and this is very, very smooth. Smooth as a baby's tush. And our problem might be that, that smoothness is something that uh, we might have to overcome. And if I take a baton, I could slice off uh, a quarter inch by, by using the baton. And maybe I might just have to take a break here and try that. There's a nearby tree that I'd be able to break and pound with because I didn't, I wasn't sure if that would be uh, that skittery. There, we now have a piece there and it doesn't hurt to learn about the use of the baton. Here, we can now take a good layer of the hard stuff off and those chips there could be collected. You could make coarse kindling now I'm trying to get past the, the hard, hardened surface that has been exposed to the air and the drying process. I could actually chip up the whole tree that way if I wanted to. Now, <laughs> we are trying to stay in the focus of the camera near where we're doing all our filming. So as a result, we didn't wander around picking the perfect tree. The cameraman would have had to follow me and probably walked around a little while. At a certain point, you can tell the, ex, the uh, what do you call it, the maturity of the demonstrator when you say, I've got to cut my losses and do something else. <laughs> well, maybe we'll say that it might be a lost cause, that we're trying to pick on something that's so extremely tough that you can't go far. So we just leave that, see what this does. You take that smooth piece there, and you, oh, there, look at that. that. I wish that it would do that right here, but it's just too hard. And so you've got to seek the alternative. 
And I will now do 25 of these. I could do this until the stick is worn through. This is an extremely important feature of a good bush knife. Extremely important uh, skill is to do this. Now you graduate from feather stick skill development when you get four, consistently four cur curls. So now I've got pretty coarse curls, that's coarse kindly. Now I start going into three, four curls if I can for a little while. And then I go into finer curls yet, which the metal match will ignite. And then with it, I could actually take this, uh, go 20 steps away and light a fire where, uh, where it's needed sort of thing. So now I might have enough to make my point because that's going to ignite those twigs. But if you were to dry those twigs because they were soaking wet, you might have to do this a hundred times. So experience would tell you just how much you've got to do. Now I'm making the very fine, fine, fine curls that I'm going to ignite with the spark from the metal match. And I'll do five more and call it a quits. There. That'll do. Now I might have to support this. I hope it's within camera range. Here's the metal match. The rod that's so a, um, um, so concentrated, so indestructible. You can put this in the fire till it's growing red and uh, take it out and they say, don't throw it against the rock. This is go off with a shower of sparks. I'm trying to stay in the in the eye, the view of the camera, and uh, I show a little bit of awkwardness. But we will get this fire going. Oh, there's cut. Now I can tilt it. Now I get it into the flames. And I used, you know, I wanted someone not to not to uh, realize because it looks easier than you'd think and I try to make it a little more challenging you can see that things are burning off there now we hold this right here like so and let the flames transfer to the twigs and in so doing we have something that in a moment the fire cannot put that out so here we we have the twig bundle burning and to prove that you can't put it out you can wing it as fiercely as you want like this. I don't want to burn people's clothing with flying twigs, but the fiercest twirling will not put that fire out. <laughs> it will actually uh, speed it up. And there the, the string burnt through, but I put the stuff on top. If you're going to light a fire, put the three biggest logs you have down first. Light this twig bundle and lay wrist thick sticks on top of that. And after they burn down, the three logs lay in the ground tend to be burning, then lay your three big logs on top. Don't squash your twigs by laying it on top of a bundle like that. Let the, let the material build up and then you lay sticks and your fire will be going three times faster than anyone else's. And that's how this knife will get you out of trouble. And the more you practice, well, you know, there are people who can swim then there are people who are Olympic swimmers. There are people that uh, uh, are currently in practice and there are people that uh, haven't done things for a while. But anyway, still sticks with me. This is one way of getting a fire going when things are really tough. And, uh, and Four Dog Stove carries this metal rod in, in various types and sizes, carries this knife in, uh, in great quantity, probably the best buy there is in terms of a, a knife that is highly suitable to use in the normal camping, survival, and so on. Show me the rod again. Tell me a little bit about the rod. The rod, this may be cerium and iron filings. I usually don't get too technical on that knowledge. I know the original lighter flints were, uh, were uh, zirconium. So in my part of the world, people still call these zirks because they, they're a huge lighter flint. All you have to do is scrape them with something sharp. It doesn't have to be a knife. And it's the scrapings off of the rod 
that get so hot and being scraped. The, uh, the rods may come in something as uh, thin as a matchstick almost, and some that are even thicker, maybe a little finger thickness. Uh, but this is the standard average. Uh, uh, the other thing I should warn you is if these age a great deal, uh, I don't know whether it's the formulation of, of whatever it is. If it's cerium and iron alloy, uh, it seems that number one, uh, the older it is, the more it tends to be soft. And when you strike it, you often find you do a lot of striking before you wear out the softened part. The other thing, if this is dropped in a wet place where it's damp, it corrodes, virtually almost melts. A rod like this would probably disappear in a year if it fell behind the seat of your, your vehicle where rain is accumulating, because not like it did to me. I found one and I found that there, there was a quarter of it left because it was laying in a pool of water over, the, over a year. But at any rate, the spark is very hot and training will cause you to develop a, an appreciation and, and a feel for what will, will ignite. Like toilet paper ignites very ready, wax paper. People may carry a, a piece of folded wax paper for the first fire and then have to do what I just did here for any other fire later. The, uh, uh, the rod is uh, very concentrated, very uh, indestructible. And, and, uh, and very powerful method of lighting fire because a person trained to lighting fire with this rod will succeed where all others fail. And that is sparking on something that is called kindling. And kindling is something that should catch on fire on the count of five when you apply match flame. And then that in turn ignites pencil thick sticks which in turn ignites finger thick sticks which in turn ignites wrist thick sticks which in turn might ignite leg thick sticks. So you got to use that sequence just like you do with sharpening from coarse, medium, fine, hone and strop. You keep working up to larger and larger thereby increasing your fire in minutes instead of you know 10, 20, 30 minutes. person lights a fire and is roaring in five minutes where other people they pile on stuff that's too big and then wonder why the fire is so slow in starting. And four dog stove is where you can buy both the knife and the rod.